anatomy of the ventilatory system. So we've actually got two zones really. We've got the, the kind of um, uh, conducting zone where we've got the air that's being taken from the atmosphere and it's being taken into the trachea towards the lungs. And so we've got the nostrils uh, which filter uh, and moisten and warm the air as well. Now, our nostrils actually face downwards and there's a reason why they face downwards. It's because what we want to try and do is limit the amount of dust and viral pathogens getting into the lungs because if we do then we start to get irritation of the lungs and we get inflammation and, and illnesses so our nostrils are kind of uh, pointing downwards so that uh, you can't easily inhale dust and, it, and, and the air it's much harder for dust to go through underneath and go upwards so the nasal cavity filters the air gets rid of any pathogens warms the air moistens the air as well and then it's taken into um, the kind of respiratory zones where we've got the alveoli and, and i'll come back to my little model in uh, a short moment now before we get to the intercostal muscles if we look at the surface area of the lungs they cover about half the size of a tennis court, okay, about 50 to 100 meters squared in uh, their area. So it's a very large surface area. And you need to have a large surface area because all of the air that you're going to get into the lungs is going to be packed in uh, like literally millions, if not billions, of uh, uh, alveolus which are contained within the lungs here. And it's those alveolus, if you were to put them end to end, it would cover the half of the tennis court, and we need to try and have a large surface area tightly packed together to allow gaseous exchange to happen quite rapidly. Because we know that we, you know, if we, if we, without oxygen for even a short amount of time, we are likely to die. So uh, these nodes are specifically adapted to have a very large surface area. So. We also have to help us with our breathing, particularly during exercise, intercostal muscles, okay? Uh, and these intercostal muscles are responsible for moving our rib cage upwards uh, and also uh, away from the spine as well. So they allow the rib cage to expand. And we'll think about uh, a little bit later about why that's important, why changing the rib cage size is important for our lungs to expand and contract, okay? Uh, so that's kind of like the basic anatomy of the uh, ventilatory system. I just want to make sure.